Hey guys, it's me, Zell, and we're here with another Star Wars reaction video. Uh, gonna go through one of the these videos that I was recommended. It is called the Sith Code History and Ideology. So I'm gonna give it a watch, um, see what it's about, what I glean from it, and then share my thoughts on it. So have a look. I am not Sith. I do not share their blood. Yet, in the time since Sith we arrived Pureblood. among these savage people, we have become their rulers. For the Force Strong must ever seek power. Mm. We have adopted their titles, their dress, and their traditions. We are no longer Jedi expelled from the Republic's smothering embrace. We are Gen Jedi, Lords of the Sith. Gen Jedi. Lords we arrived of the here Sith. after the Hundred Year War that nearly toppled the Jedi Order. So confident in their triumph, the Jedi did not execute us. With lightsaber points at our backs, they marched us above the galleon that would take us into exile, outside the Republic's borders. There were twelve of us. Ajunta Paul, High General and our leader. Zoksan, Commander of the Black Legions. Baron Drapa, a fleet's admiral. <laughs> he Karnas looks kind of silly. With her battle meditation. And I, Sorza Sin, grower of living weapons and biological plagues, and founder of the Sith Code. Mm, that don't sound good. Biological. The war had raged for a century between the Jedi Council, with its petrified orthodoxy, and those who wished to topple it. After escaping Tython, we put together an army of dark side abominations, Tython. including several of my personal creations. For years we fought, both sides losing more than they gained. But then, the Hundred Year Darkness came to a screeching halt at the Battle of Corbos. Outnumbered and all but defeated, we fought on with the strength and passion of a wounded Rancor. Ajunta Paul himself slew a dozen Jedi before the battle's end, and for a moment, Victory seemed plausible, but a cowardly wave of orbital bombing crushed those hopes. And I, along with the other Dark Jedi, were brought before the Jedi Council in chains. Our punishment for high treason was to be banished into uncharted space. But our flight into the unknown was not without direction. For years, I gathered information, searching for proof that the Kingdom of Sith, Sith Purebloods, existed. My beliefs have been vindicated. What lies before us now is a limitless pool of steadfast warriors and an untapped wealth of knowledge about the dark side of the Force. Mm. But while Corvos was the last battle of the Hundred Year Darkness, the conflict began far before that. With and they're the first using great swords? Schism. Historians oh. squabble over how many such I know it's splits not have occurred Coon. within Jedi ranks. I care not for the exact number. But with each one, the Jedi Council's stranglehold on the ways of the Force have weakened. The Hundred Year Darkness was a spectacular, yet very predictable revolt against Jedi complacency. That's the, the Clone Wars Jedi Council. In nearly 20 millennia. Even after its first founding on Tython, its most curious members realized the failings of their teachers, and so began the first Great Schism. In those days, a Kashmir outsider named Zendor mm. inspired several Jedi to question oh, the Zandar. Side, or the Ashla as they called it. They discovered the use of the Dark Side, or Bogan, and unlocked the shackles their Jedi Masters had placed on the Force. Shackles, Zendor's they considered it. became his acolytes, or the legions of Leto. Of course, the Jedi fought. They fought with desperation against a future in which they had no authority. Today, history paints Zendor as a That villain. guy looks starkiller esque. He and his followers perished in the Battle of Clumis. But that was not the tragedy of the First Great Schism. The tragedy was that the Jedi learned nothing. They could have embraced the dark side and become the central power of the universe. Instead, they returned to their tradition. So utilizing both? And alienated their most gifted members. 
Mm. We exiles are the heirs to Zendor's That sounds a bit, heresy. uh... After our exile, you know. I guided our creaking galleon through the hyperspace breakwater known as the Stygian Caldera, which could have not been accomplished without command of the Force. For this reason, the Sith Empire could stay hidden for millennia to come. A lot to gleam we touch down from that. On Korriban, the world that screams the loudest for those that can hear the dark side's voice. It is on Korriban that the Sith purebloods began. It is here that they often return to death. Hmm. We stepped out of the cramped reek of our interstellar prison into the light of an unfamiliar sun. Massive tombs carved from the planet's stone surrounded us. The sand was littered with the bones of a thousand kings. The Sith greeted us. Despite our obvious superior powers, we were not hailed as gods when we first arrived. It took weeks for us to understand the power structure of their culture, to undermine it, and to annihilate the current king. You mean to manipulate it? Ajunta Paul beheaded their ruler and claimed the throne as the blood heir to the ancestral King Adas. We became his shadow hands. From that time on, I made it my goal to understand the Sith, discovering the Sith throne world of Zyost in the process. It is there that we erected palaces to rule as Sith lords. As we soon discovered, the Sith respect power, and they are content to serve us. We rule the Sith. Here, we will build a sovereignty of the dark side to overcome millennia of injustice. We will harness the The Sith Code. A single unifying oh, code interesting. to be derived from Sith philosophy. The Jedi have a code, and we exiles know it well. But we also know it is full of half-truths and inadequacies. The Sith purebloods require no mantra to remind them how to live. They simply take what they can kill what they don't need, and use everything to its fullest. They are ruled by the fittest, and are a model of what the dark side can achieve. There is knowledge to be gained from their example. It is plain that fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hatred to power, and power to victory. Rage channeled through anger is unstoppable. Vader, prime example. The Jedi Code confines its terrence. Peace, serenity, and harmony are restatements of the same thing. The passive acceptance of limitations. The Jedi encourage this. But passion will always defeat peace. As we build our empire here on Zyost, our successors will hold true to the That's Sith cool. Code. That's cool. That's cool. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through, Through strength, strength I, gain I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The Force shall free me. I know that code way better than <laughs> the Jedi code because people quote it so much. So very interesting indeed. There was a lot to grasp there and I won't recollect, remember all of it, but and some interesting points for sure them mentioning you know when they were exiled because they were utilizing and wanting to use the dark side of the force how at least this narrator the the guy um he's like we basically suggesting saying we are the strongest of them the the better of them and they didn't want to utilize that so it already had that edge of thought of like we're superior to them because we're harnessing the dark side so an interesting thought in that um obviously not directly in truth i'm sure they were powerful but we've been shown that there are very powerful jedi as well now for sure i think it's not necessarily their lack of use of the dark side that made them have their fall 
it was their them not deciding to see their flaws opening their mind because they were so tunnel vision into this way of thinking and this belief system they were so much on that track that they didn't think beyond that like we've seen the flaws in the system but it doesn't mean their beliefs and things within it make them weak it just was their mindset that didn't that allowed these things to come in and break those barriers down right and destroy their system so i think that was the bigger issue but i think that's the flaws of both side uh of both the jedi and the sith was focusing so much on the system and the ranking system almost that is like the downs the downfall it wasn't necessarily it wasn't necessarily the dark side itself or the light side itself. It's always the individual because our individual feelings can get involved and then fed into the system and we get in this one track mine and it's hard for us to get off that. So they had a point about that, but so bringing it back to the Sith, um, that they were originally jedi exiles that the jedi had seemed to be you know was there first from what i'm understanding gleaning from this was that the sith had were branched from the jedi and then their lack of trying to venture out or understand have a deeper understanding of the other aspects of the force such as the dark side of the force um and so these people had all these maybe more morally ethical questionable th routes they were willing to go for it like i don't i'm sure there was not a lot of ethics involved in that guy i forgot what word he used exactly but the the narrator which i, I forget his name um oh swords swords of sin he was the founder of the sith code apparently so it's from the book of the book of sith which i'm curious where that is if you have an answer for that so interesting to think you know again he was saying like he i'm sure it was questionable morals of i don't know if he creates these creatures solely from the force or if he's using creatures that already are existence and somehow using the dark sides to manipulate them and change them into these beasts so i don't know if they're a summon thing or something more scientific transformation you know either way questionable <laughs> risky um either way you're like torturing or using something against its will which the sith show commonly shows um there's passion involved but and then they use the sith it, it seems like basically the pure blood sith they were they convoluted these two things of jedi exiled jedi using the dark side but then bringing in some of these pure blood sith who have been who lived on this very strong in the dark side force energy planet, but then eventually taking over and manipulating and getting into their system, right? So, and thus they took on their ways of life, took on their names, even the Sith. You know, typically people don't want to be conquered like that, especially since it sounds like they were overpowered them and basically say, hey, this is our way of life history shows we commonly have done that as man obviously so yeah overall very interesting uh how they got to that place i'm not surprised um again we've seen the flaws in the jedi and goes to show in some ways that thinking the jedi thinking caused the sith to arise but at the same time, even if they were willing to like change some thinking, ultimately they're like, we're not going to give into the dark side and allow some of these questionable things to occur. There will always be people that branch out and exile because they have a different way of thinking. That's just how it is. That's why we have a ton of different religions and branches and, and different parts of even the same belief system. There are going to be little differences that people want to follow through in so um and as we've seen even within the jedi and within the sith there are people with different ideologies or focuses within the system so very cool um very interesting and to see how it evolved over time the jedi has been around a long time and the sith is a bit younger and we've seen even that system change over time from large amounts to rule of two which we are a bit more familiar with. So overall, a uh, cool video. You can find it and watch this yourself. 
on Sith Reign is the person who made the video titled the Sith Code History and Ideology. It'll be in the description below. But thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video if you haven't seen it for yourself. Again, uh, it's worth taking another look through and it's something I, I may do so because there's a lot there and there's certainly even more. There's a lot of lore and history in the Star Wars that many of us might not know, but definitely add some cool basis to our understanding and some deeper context to things. But thanks so much for watching, guys, and checking it out. Hope you show your support by hitting the like button. And certainly come with your thoughts. Uh, always nice to have a dialogue with everyone and learn something new. So thanks, guys. See you next time. Thank you.